We have a serious palm oil problem on our hands and it's manifesting itself in many ugly hues. Deforestation, wildlife extinction, global warming, human trafficking, forced labor, slavery, sexual assault. I told you it's very ugly. The world's favorite vegetable oil sure looks harmless and innocuous, but its industry runs alarmingly red, not with palm oil, but with the blood and sweat of innocent humans and animals who are suffering tragic loss at the hands of, you guessed it, big and greedy corporations. However, before you point the finger, it might shock you to know that you're also part of the problem. Stick around to the end of this video as I expose to you the dark side of the palm oil industry and the global catastrophe it currently fuels. We are addicted to palm oil as a species. If you don't believe me, check this out. Palm oil is so versatile an ingredient that you can eat it or apply it as lipstick. Palm oil is present in almost everything we use in our day-to-day -day life. In soap, because it helps to create the bubbles. In lipstick, it gives smoothness. In ice cream and peanut butter, it gives the creamy, neutral flavor as well as stability across a range of temperatures. And that's not even an exhaustive list. Palm oil is also present in instant noodles, bread, butter, margarine, pizza, detergents, and even candles. In fact, if you pick a random product in the supermarket, there's a 50% chance that product contains palm oil. And of course, it goes without saying that every purchase of such products funds the palm oil disaster. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Palm oil has one more major global use, which is as a biofuel. In 2009, a decree was passed in the EU that biofuels must be blended into motor vehicle fuels in order to temper the havoc fossil fuel was wreaking on the environment. Ironically, this would create an unprecedented increase in the demand for palm oil. Plus, who knew? Turns out palm oil has three times more climate impact than even fossil fuel thanks to CO2 and methane emissions. You probably think that palm oil should be banned with immediate effect, but let's not get too hasty. Palm oil can be a friend. Like all oils, palm oil is made up of fatty acids, half of which are monosaturated and polysaturated fatty acids. Unlike saturated fats, unsaturated fats are great for the heart and help to keep blood cholesterol levels low. In fact, this is what contributed to the crisis we have on our hands now. By the early 1990s, brands like Unilever decided to get rid of trans fats in its butters and margarines after finding scientific evidence that trans fat was bad for the health, even worse than saturated fat. Their choice replacement? Palm oil. Not only was this ingredient comparatively healthier, it was also cheap, making it the sensible alternative. Soon, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration gave all food manufacturers a three-year ultimatum to get rid of all trans fats from their products. Authorities in the U.S. have set a deadline for eliminating all artificial trans fats from their products. And so, naturally, all of them turned to palm oil. And today, more than two-thirds of palm oil goes into food. But here's where it gets worrying. Palm oil might be healthier than trans fat, but it can still mess up your body, especially your heart. Because palm oil contains a lot of saturated fat, consuming lots of it puts you at risk of heart disease and even stroke. Research even shows that in certain situations, palm oil can interfere with certain medicines, and yet you continue to find it in all of these products by companies that should know better like Nestle, Cadbury, PepsiCo, and other major food giants. Do these guys actually not know just how dangerous palm oil is to our health and to our environment? Or do they just not care? Well, when people are greedy enough, they do anything to keep those dollars coming, even if it involves downright questionable practices. But how far will these guys go? You're about to find out. To begin with, there's one other thing I didn't tell you about palm oil. Producing palm oil is unbelievably cheap. And you know the motive of capitalism. You want to keep the cost of production super low so you can drive those profits as high as possible. So it should come as no shock to you that everyone dove right into that palm oil business. And by everyone, I mean everyone. 
You can tell by the stratosphere growth in production over the years and the current future projections. Did you know that before 1995, global production of palm oil was at 15.2 million tons per year? Last year, that number spiked to a whopping 73 million tons. And guess what? By 2050, that number would once again increase, this time by a factor of 8 to about 450 million tons. It's incredible. But as you know, there's always a cost. In just 13 years, between 2004 and 2017, more than 43 million hectares of tropical rainforests have been cleared to grow oil palm plantations. And out of the 24 particular deforestation points of concern in the world, two in particular have been giving global conservative organizations sleepless nights, Sumatra in Indonesia and Borneo, which is a part of three countries, Indonesia, Malaysia and Brunei. You see, Indonesia and Malaysia are responsible for producing 90% of the palm oil used globally. And that's somewhat interesting considering that the palm oil fruit from which palm oil is extracted wasn't originally native to either of these countries. In fact, it wasn't until as recently as 150 years ago that palm oil got introduced to Malaysia in 1857. At first, production rates were quite normal because no one had picked up on the advantages of oil palm production just yet. But then Mr. Leslie Davidson stepped on the scene and introduced an idea that would change the palm oil industry forever. Davidson was the vice chair of Unilever International Plantations Group in 1974, and he initiated the idea of importing a particular species of weevils into the Unilever plantation in Johor, Malaysia. Normally, weevils are known as pests, but this particular species were excellent at pollinating oil palm trees organically. This meant that Unilever no longer had to pay laborers to pollinate the trees by hand, with the weevils doing the faster, cheaper, and more natural work. In fact, the idea was genius, and that year, Unilever enjoyed a major boost in yield of 400,000 tons of palm oil with zero side effects. In the blink of an eye, the world of palm oil production was changed forever. People started to see just how lucrative the oil palm tree was. And before you knew it, huge acres of forests were getting destroyed so companies could build their own haven of oil palm plantations. Rainforest Rescue reports that the equivalent of 300 football fields are being destroyed every hour in Sumatra and Borneo. In fact, 55% to 60% of Malaysia's forests have already been destroyed, especially in Borneo, and this has caused many endangered species to lose their homes. We're looking at the orangutan, the rhinoceros, the Sumatra tiger, the Borneo elephant, all in danger of extinction because their natural habitats are getting destroyed on a regular basis. As if that's not enough, this widespread deforestation has also made Indonesia the third largest emitter of carbon dioxide after China and the United States. You see, the rainforests in Indonesia are carbon-rich peatlands, so when you clear these forests, they immediately become flammable, and the slightest spark is all it takes to create a hard-to-control inferno. But it's not just the deforestation. It's also the processing, packaging, transporting, and consuming that goes into oil palm production. According to the International Council on Clean Transportation, palm-driven land use change in Indonesia and Malaysia has caused the emissions of 500 million tons of CO2 from these two countries on a yearly basis. That's almost as much CO2 as the aviation sector contributes. Yes, there has been a pressure on to make the industry more sustainable and slow down deforestation, but after all these years, only about 19% of the global palm oil production is considered sustainable. There are many reasons making the palm oil industry more sustainable has not particularly yielded impressive results. One such reason is that there is no real sustainable alternative to palm oil. Well, technically, coconut oil and rapeseed oil are on the table, they're more expensive to produce than palm oil. Plus, the plants of these oil seeds are not as efficient as the oil palm in terms of growing. Another reason for the delay in making the palm oil industry sustainable is that 40% of global palm oil is produced by small-scale indigenous farmers, many of whom are not educated enough to understand the implications of their efforts on the environment or deep-pocketed enough to adopt more sustainable production practices. Plus, governments of these palm oil producing countries are invested heavily in the sector because of the words of Malaysia's Minister of Primary Industries, Teresa Kok. Palm oil is synonymous with poverty eradication. But the push for an increase in palm oil production hasn't just come from governments of palm oil producing states. The pressure has also come from global external bodies like the World Bank and the IMF. In 1998, Asia suffered an economic crisis, and the singular condition the IMF gave Indonesia for the bailout was for the country to cultivate more and generate revenue, even at the expense of destroying its fragile rainforests. 
Consequently, oil palm production started to skyrocket in Indonesia as the IMF and other large banks poured in funds in billions of dollars. In fact, between 1935 and 1999, Dutch banks alone provided $12 billion in loans to Indonesia palm producers, and more financial institutions have continued to invest since then. On the surface, that sounds like good news as Indonesia was able to dig itself out of its economic recession, but if you listen very closely, you might hear something. The cries of millions of laborers, the poorest of the poor in Asia, being exploited in the worst ways of child labor to outright slavery. There have even been allegations of other heinous crimes in the underworld of the $65 billion palm oil industry. In 2020, the Associated Press ran an investigation into the workforce powering the palm oil industry. Some allegations were bad, with some workers complaining about being cheated, ill-treated, and forced to bring their children to work. But others were downright horrifying. According to reports from the AP investigation, the demand for palm oil around the world is increasing faster than plantations can find enough workers. And to make sure they can never escape, these workers would have their passports seized, a textbook red flag for forced labor. Plus, it's not a rare sight to see children working alongside their parents on these plantations as cheap laborers. Sharing his experience with the AP reporters, a particular laborer, only known as Joom, explains his plight working on a Malaysian plantation run by Felda. By the way, Felda is one of the largest palm oil companies in the world and is actually owned by the government. Joom is an Indonesian, but his inability to get a job back at home took him to Malaysia in 2013, where he landed a job as a plantation worker. In his statement, Joom reveals that at night, he sleeps under the stars next to a campfire, where there's no protection from the elements or from the looming wild animals, including snakes and tigers. Like many others in his situation, Joom dreams of escaping this nightmare, but his boss confiscated and lost his passport, which means he can't ever leave without running the risk of getting arrested. Sumatra's plantations have even gorier stories. Workers have testified that they don't get paid for not meeting the daily harvesting quota, even though the daily quotas are literally impossible to meet. There also has been instances of sexual harassment, physical assaults, and other forms of human right violations. But the governments and the so-called billion-dollar companies are turning the blind eye so that they can profit from this. It's sadder that these issues are commonplace even on small plantations and so-called RSPO-compliant ones. And we haven't even started to explore the unjust land grabbing from the indigenous people of Sumatra and Borneo. Fortunately, there's been an attempt to spread awareness on the devastations of palm oil, and few companies like Marks & Spencer, The Body Shop, Weight Rose, among others, have committed to more sustainable palm oil. But again, this is difficult to track because palm oil can be listed as an ingredient under 200 different names. How do you keep all those names straight? Now, a quick fix to the palm oil crisis could be to tell companies to stop importing palm oil from Indonesia and Malaysia. Well, the card has been played before. In fact, it was Indonesia's president, Joko Widodo, himself, who placed a ban on the exportation of palm oil from Indonesia to meet the local demand and to make it more sustainable by controlling the supply, but it did not help. In fact, it only made things worse for everybody, especially the poorest of the poor. Because here's the problem. If palm oil is scarce, then food prices rise. And when this happens, sales drop and companies begin to look for other cheaper alternatives to palm oil to keep their accounts from entering into the red zone. This is already terrible news because big companies will get land hungry. After all, they're going to need more land to grow other oil seeds that will serve as an alternative to palm oil. Unfortunately, none grows as efficient as palm oil, so they need to buy many hectares of land. In the end, as most always do, they deprive poor indigenous landowners of their land, thereby leading to increased poverty in such low-income countries. It's a vicious cycle that appears not to have a solution, which is why it wasn't surprising when Indonesia's president called off the ban barely three weeks after he placed the embargo. So we're back to square one. <laughs>
Now, is the palm oil problem ever going to be solved? Well, biotech engineers have been working on a synthetic palm oil alternative that isn't produced in the rainforest, and the potential seems promising. Still, sustainable palm oil alternatives haven't done so well in the market historically. It seems like the vast majority of palm oil consumers are not just aware of the havoc the palm oil industry has created. So, tragically, the world's palm oil problem might remain an unsolvable Rubik's Cube for a very long time. Let me know by dropping your thoughts down in the comments, and for more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.